Hey community, Aubrey here with Dev Central, and I'm joined today by Frank Machado with DigiCert. He's going to tell us a little bit about our partnership and, uh, and, and DigiCert, as well as give us an actual demo of the integration, which is always super exciting. So uh, how are you doing today? Good, good. Good, good conference? Right. Yeah, yeah so far it's good, it's busy, very loud as you can hear. Oh yeah. So I'll do the best I can to get my audio across here. All right, so today we're gonna talk about the F5 integration with DigiSearch certificates through the Acme certificate, the Acme protocol for automation. And again, we're gonna go through just a quick presentation and then we're gonna jump right into the demonstration. So the way DigiCert offers automation, and we look at it from a larger perspective of being a digital security management tool for the enterprise solution. And the way we offer this for appliances or for servers is we, we follow the Acme protocol for automation. Uh, for the F5 particularly, the local traffic manager, we use what's called network sensors. Network sensors, think of them as a, as a multi-tool with no attachments. And the way that I do my automation, the way I connect to different services, are those little attachments that I'm inserting. And those sensors go strategically inside the enterprise network. They don't talk to each other. They don't have to worry about being near each other. They all have a specific job to do, and the customer controls that. The way we do automation and the way we do all, all our services with our certificate services for inside the enterprise is it's all outbound communication. DigiCert is not coming in to the customer's network. And so what happens is that network sensor will use two ports to communicate outwards. Port 80 for the heartbeat to let the TLM, Trust Lifecycle Manager, know that the, the sensor is still operating. And then if, it need, if there's a, a work flag, It'll come in through mutual authentication over port 443, and it will then do whatever whatever it's being told to. Automate this certificate now. Do a network scan. Uh, connect to the Microsoft service or the F5 to see if there's any new certificates on its CMDB. So again, what we're going to look at today is getting a certificate deployed onto the F5, onto the actual web instance, not just sitting in the F5. It's actually they're ready for the website to start using it immediately. Okay. And again, we're going to talk about some other uh, functions that we provide. Uh, the, the thing that to understand with DigiCert is that we're providing lo full lifecycle management or full lifecycle automation. From cradle to grave or start to finish, we are nudging the appliance to create the key pair, give us the CSR, get it signed, bring it back and, and tell the F5 to install it, and then we test that installation to make sure everything's working. And then all the customer has to do is either verify in the F5 or they can go to the website and see the new certificate that's already been deployed. The second portion of what we provide is a seamless management of disruption events. So what that means, if, if there's an unexpected expiration of another vendor certificate, or maybe the certificate is questionable on trust and they gotta hurry up and replace it, so they revoke the certificate by accident, we can immediately deploy a certificate on, literally within seconds, onto that appliance based on the administrative control and of course ease of use is there built into the, the solution. And of course with that, we don't have a lot of people scrambling around to get this done, which can take sometimes minutes to hours. One person can control it. If you're doing a renewal feature of that certificate, you can set it to, to a frequency-based renewal where it's touchless. At that point, it's a wash, rinse, repeat mechanism and the certificate automatically gets renewed or reissued and deployed onto the appliance. Without any, without any additional difficulties, and you can still have notifications sent to you, letting you know that automation worked, automation failed, certificate renewed, it's near renewal, all those functions are there. And of course, this comes lock, stock, and barrel. These are not added features. These are not things customers have to worry about paying for. We put all these in, we bake it into the solution out of the gate. Okay, and with that, we're gonna go and jump into a demonstration. So, let's go and take a look at it. So, what I've done, is I've gone on to the F5 already. The way we've done it is we have a network sensor that I've deployed. I have a network sensor. And what I use is called what we call connectors. So the network sensor is the only thing that is residing in the customer's network. There, it's, it's, again, strategically placed. Um, you don't have, again, if you have 10, 20 F5s, you don't need 10, 20 sensors. Rather, what you have is one or two sensors based on the routability and the access to the appliance. And then from there, you have to set up that connectivity. This is what we call connectors. Connectors are applications that live inside of the Trust Lifecycle Manager, so we don't take up additional space inside the customer network. Rather, what we do is we use footprint information to connect to the appliance, make sure we can talk to it, and while we're at it, with every connector, we always see if there's any certificates that are residing on it, and we bring it into what we call a single book of record or to an inventory where you can start managing those certs. The one uniform thing that we do with all our connectors is we let you know two things about those certificates that are out there. There's some that are already, there's sockets or instances 
that already have it, that already have certificates on them. Could be other vendors. It's agnostic at this point. Or there's open sockets, which are unsecured IP imports, and you can go in there and you can take them over if you want to. Again, today we're going to look at just the one that I'm using because other people share this F5 with me. But again, I'm going to go after my certificate and I'm going to put a brand new certificate on it very easily. And the way we do that is. But what we offer in the, as you notice, I went to the inventory. Automatically, I always land in my inventory, even from the connectors. We bring you to a single book of record every time for ease of use and to quickly get to what you're looking for, which is that management of those, of those crypto assets. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go look for my certificates, which I'm, I'm based on a very specific port inside our local traffic manager. So I'm on 8476, and I'm going to go to that, and I'm going to find my certificate. And then there's my certificate, and I'm gonna go, and as you can see, I already did automation once. I can renew the cert. Now that I own it, and that I autom did automation to it, I have multiple functions I can take advantage of now that I own it. I can get a new certificate, I can renew it, I can reissue it, so those disruptive events. If something happens where I'm forced to revoke the certificate, I can actually set up a profile that'll automatically reissue the cert onto the F5 because it detected the revocation. There's a lot of ways that I can make this very, very almost humanless in that aspect of that. I don't have to really touch anything. Maybe I'm just clicking a few things here and there. But again, single person, ease of use, and a lot of access to that device within the enterprise. So in this case, I'm just gonna request a brand new cert. Uh, for the sake of time, we didn't go through a lot of other things in here, but we, we require what's called profiles. Think of profiles as containers of policy everything from the kind of certificate I want, all these features that I want in a certificate, public trust, private trust, maybe specific types of enhanced key usage, even my notification policy, I might have very specific things that I want out of notification. And I want to know all these little things and I want it all wrapped up in a nice shrink wrap, so you make a profile. That profile will tell me what I can, what I can do with that cert. So in this case, I'm just going to get a 30-day cert. And if I look at the profile itself, my, minus my garbled text because of my small pixelization, but I can go in here and see that, oh, okay, I'm getting a 30-day cert. It's public trusted cert. So the public trusted cert is actually off another solution inside of DigiCert where we keep all our public CAs. And in the beginning, when we set up a customer's account, we have them connect to that with a connector as well. And then what happens is they start getting access to all those publicly trusted products and all those features that go with it. So in this case, I'm going to get a 30-day certificate and I'm going to choose that profile. That profile, again, is everything I need. So rather than having to go through this long enrollment of all these things, I already preset them. So now all I have to do is pick my profile, which is kind of telling me everything I want to be. So think of it on your remote, you have your favorites. You click your favorites, it's just your channels you want. And even then, just the one channel you might want to watch, whatever you're looking for. Did I, did I hear you say correctly, like, uh, did I hear correctly you said, uh that you kind of like, once you've gone through it once, it's sort of like set it and forget it, is that correct? Yeah, You absolutely. do it once, you set your preferences, and then yeah. the, the next time you want to reissue, it's set, it knows that's what right. you need for exactly. that app. And so, and, and that's cool. a great point, because what we just saw right now is exactly what I'm doing. I'm getting a brand new cert on an instance I already have running on the F5, and now I'm just, all I'm doing is putting a brand new cert on it. There is, there's not a, it's more kind of de facto, there's not a right or wrong way to put certificates, you know, brand new or reissue or renewal. It's whatever you want to take advantage of on how you're getting your certificates. Some customers like to have the best bang for the buck, so they really wait sometimes to the last minute to do the renewals. And some also say, you know what? Because right now we can do one year, they'll say, okay, I'll wait to the 397th day and then I'll renew and Digicert will automatically give me the extra time on that new certificate until we can no longer do 397. But Digicert automatically gives that time if you renew it the 32nd day from expiration. We allow it. Nice. So, but to your point, yeah, I picked my profile. I got exactly what I want. Um, I can pick and choose on the F5. Where do I want to store things? And we have it based on security levels. We can we can store it right on the IP on the right on the big the big IP system, which is going to be minimal security or medium based security. The fifth module, which is start getting the higher levels of security. And then if I have a network HSM inside my network, I can also pick that and it will deploy it onto the network based on the communication with the F5. What I wanted to know is, do you guys support? Um like all net HSMs, or is there like a certain, just certain vendors that you support? So from the perspective of the F5, we probably support just about any vendor out there because when, when we're communicating to the F5, the F5 knows what network HSMs it's using. It has, okay. Yeah, so it's already, the, good, the beauty of it is it's already a pre-established configuration, so we don't have to go in there and tell the F5 where to go. 
great. We're, so you guys communicate still just directly with the F5. That's right. And it manages the agent. And the F5 guides us. Great. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, so in this case, we're going to use the F5, I, the big IP file system, because that's just what we use on there. And again, if I have any other additional features, I can add those. What it's been doing over time is it's been collecting my common name and adding them to my cert because I told it to do that. So it's, it's just consistently building what we call our subject alternative name list or our additional common names that, that or identities that certificate can represent. Now, because I'm getting a public trusted cert from Cert Central, I have to pay respect to what Cert Central wants on its ordering processes. So if I had additional fields that were required, I'd have to fill those in. But if I was doing frequency-based automation, I'd fill them in once, send it off, and they'd always stay filled in. I don't have to keep redoing it. Love it. So again, the kind of the fire and forget or wash, rinse, repeat methodology. I can pick a time when I want to schedule it. Either I can start it at 3 a.m. this morning or tomorrow morning, or I can just start it right now. We're just going to do it right now. And I can do a lot of, a ton of other features that we allow. And again, frequency-based renewals, things like that. In this case, I'm going to agree to the process, which is a service agreement. And then what's going to happen is the process is going to start on its own. Now, you can do a couple things here. You can, you know, go get a cup of coffee, whatever you want. Ironically, it moves very fast. <laughs> Hopefully with web connection, it'll move in faster here. But, um, but what's happening to explain this process out is it is actually going out to the F5. It's logging in with the login information the administrator put in there. We're telling the F5, okay, on this web instance specifically, create me a key pair, give me the CSR, and I'm taking that back to DigiCert to get it signed. Remember, it's all outbound communication, so every, instead of every two minutes, every 30 seconds now, I'm talking to DigiCert. Are you done yet? Are you done yet? Are you done yet? At some point, we say, you know what? We're done. We have the certificate, and so it gets in, it's issuing the certificate now. So now we're getting status checks. So is out of curiosity, so I've worked with some security teams in the past where they don't like to automatically approve those. Right. Um, so do you have the capacity to also have maybe a, a, a security user come in and okay those? Yes. Okay. Yes. So Great. to your question, you know, can you have someone manually approve it? We can. Um, I would say to the audience, be careful, because <laughs> automation typically is based on efficiency, time to live. So do you want, you can have that, but only if people are aware that it's happening and they're going to be waiting. They're at the go waiting to click. Otherwise, we recommend working it out with the PKI policy managers or compliance if they can allow an auto approve functionality. Typically, with, with because automation is point to point, it's the assumption is, to use that word carefully, is that everything is complete. Auto, the validation is done, things like that, and it moves very quickly. As you can see here, we're done deploying the certificate. Not only did we, not only did we get it issued, we got it installed, and then I, what we did is that what the sensor does is it acts as a dumb client, it goes back and it talks to the F5 and it says, okay, can I invoke the certificate? And it checks the chain, the leaf cert, the intermediate, the root, in which we have the root and historic and verify, and it says, okay, everything's done. Now, what it does is a courtesy to the customer is it also lets them see the entire summary of the automation process that took place and the validity of the period, everything that the customer was doing. So think of it like a, an encrypted session. Not only did we find out what you can do and what you want, we also made sure you can communicate correctly. And at the very end of it, the message is the completion of automation to show, wow, it's done, I can move on to the next thing, automation is working, and I can even set up on a frequency, and next year or in 30 days, it'll just renew by itself, and I have no additional work to do outside of maybe clicking go to start it. I love it. And voila, that is automation. That looked easy, man. It is, it is very easy. I love it. Well. I hope that was helpful for you, community, and uh, you know, thank you for taking the time today, Frank. I appreciate Anytime. it, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, and I appreciate the present, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, community. Check out all the stuff that we've got coming out from RSA 2025. Once again, I'm Aubrey with Dev Central. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Aubrey. All right. You got it, Aubrey, man. You're the thank man, you. sir.